So from the homeowner's perspective, it's a, it's a great deal because you get um, tax free cash. In other words, there's no immediate tax to pay. And in fact, the cost of our agreement can be used to reduce your capital gains tax rate. So from a homeowner's perspective, cash today, no monthly payments, and you can get up to half a million dollars. So, you know, it's it's not an insignificant amount. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. A lot of people are house rich and cash poor. They've got tons of equity, but no cash. What if you were able to get cash from your equity with no debt, no monthly payments, and no interest? Well, that's exactly what my guest on today's show does on a regular basis. My guest has helped hundreds of homeowners use the equity in their homes to pay off expensive credit cards, uh, remodel their homes, pay college tuition, use the cash any way they want to, all with no debt, no payments, and no interest. Well, today I'm talking with Matthew Sullivan, and he's going to share with you exactly how he does it. Matthew is also a master at raising private money. So if you need more cash for any reason, you don't want to miss one second of this episode. How would you like to turn your equity into your home or from your home into cash without getting a home equity loan, without getting a reverse mortgage, with no interest and no monthly payments? Don't go anywhere. I'm getting ready to plug you into the money. And today I have got an amazing guest that is going to come on here with me in just a moment and not only talk about private money, but in addition to that, also how to convert your equity from your house into cash. Now, my guest has been helping people, homeowners, access a portion of their home equity without taking on any more debt. So this new financing that my guest is going to talk about, it's not a HELOC. It's not a loan. No, it's not even a reverse mortgage. So what does that mean? Well, that means that homeowners like you can get cash from their equity with no interest and no monthly payments. I mean, how in the world do you do that? Well, my guest and his team have helped hundreds of homeowners like you use their home equity to pay off expensive credit cards, remodel their homes, pay college tuitions, and diversify into other investments if they want to, all without taking on extra debt. The question is, how in the world do you do that? Well, guess what? We're now ready to reveal the secrets to you by inviting my special guest to join me right now, Mr. Matthew Sullivan. Matthew, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on, Jay. What a great introduction. Well, I'm excited to have you on, Matthew. My lens, as of six weeks ago, You are now a fellow North Carolinian, about two hours from where I live. I just learned that prior to the show. So welcome to North Carolina, Matthew. May may I say what fantastic thunderstorms you guys have. You know, we sit on the porch thinking this is like a a phenomenal light show. So it's worth moving here just for that. Well, I got to ask first, I mean, we're going to talk about, as I just said, how in the world to access, um, you know, you how can how someone can use home equity and get cash without taking on debt. I mean, what a phenomenal, intriguing topic that you bring to the show. Of course, we got to talk about private money. I mean, I am the private money authority. But before that, why and how in the world did you get from London, England, all the way to North Carolina? Um, it's a long story, yes. um, but I moved here about uh, nine years ago um, and um, started off in Southern California 
um, spent about um, almost seven years there. Um, and then uh, we, you know, we have a young family and we moved to uh, Utah for a couple of years, I think really just to uh, um, escape California <laughs> during the top, you know, the, the uh, COVID, cre uh, uh, you know, the peak of COVID. Um, and uh, we're sort of gradually moving east. Um, so, uh, but, but I can tell you, moving a house, you know, four kids, a dog and a guinea pig, two and a half thousand miles um, is probably the, the, the greatest logistical challenge I think I've faced in, a, you know, for quite a long time. I can imagine. I can imagine. Well, I'm glad to hear you here in the state. I mean, you're only a couple hours at the road. Um, perhaps we can meet for a spot of tea. What do you say? Oh, that would be fantastic. Of course. <laughs> We don't have spots of tea in North Carolina, but I thought I'd. Well, I mean, we can always start. I mean, we can maybe you know start a trend. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, first of all, private money. I love to talk about private money. It's had more of an impact on my business, and I love to have experts, so on such as yourself, that have raised private money. But in addition to that, Matthew, my word, you you know you've just got you know our curiosity up about being what's it mean to be you know house rich and cash poor and getting yep. cash without, without, you know, getting a, a HELOC and all that kind of stuff. First of all, tell me about your experience in raising private money. How did you get into private money and why did you? Well, I think it, it started when I moved here, um, as I said, about nine years ago, one of the first things that I did was set up a real estate crowdfunding platform. This is one of the very early real estate um, platforms. Um, and, uh, you know, my background is, you know, technology, finance, it, it, uh, it's not real estate. Um, and uh, what I was very lucky to do uh, initially was to find um, a couple of, you know, fabulous partners who we're still working with today. Um, and really what the crowdfunding platform was all about was um, taking deals that otherwise would normally only be accessible to um, high net worth individuals and you know, large investors and make them more accessible to, you know, smaller investors. So really that was, um, in a way that was taking deals that would normally be presented to institutions and make them available to smaller private investors. Um, so I've got a, you know, fair amount of experience we've built over the years in terms of dealing with smaller investors. Um, we launched a couple of uh, real estate debt funds. And uh, so we now, um, with my partners, uh, we run a couple of uh, uh, you know debt funds that invest in um, you know lo loans secured primarily by development projects. Um, so you know we've got some good experience in terms of dealing with people online, offline, um, and really raising private money uh, in a in a regulated uh, environment. So there's a, a, a number of different experiences there. Have you raised private? What type of project or projects have you raised private money for? Well, I think really the the, the projects are. Um, if we look, I mean, this is not something that I'm actively involved in right now because I mean, for the last four years, my focus really has been you know quantum re. Um, but the the projects were um, residential properties, um, small multifamily developments. So not the huge sort of ticket. So typically, you know, four units um, and upwards um, or, um, you know, small developments. So you've got maybe sort of 15, 20 units on a small development where we would raise equity capital um, mm -hmm. from private investors that would enable us to secure the debt funding to complete the project. Absolutely. Well, that makes sense. Well, since we talk so much about private money here on the show, I want to go ahead and give a free gift away uh, right now. And then we're going to move into your topic that just sounds so fascinating. So here's my free gift to you. It's private money for your deals, residential deals, apartments, whatever it is. Well, I tell you what, private money's had the biggest impact on my business. And I'm so excited about this brand new money guide, private money guide that I just finished writing. It's called Seven Reasons Why Private Money Will Skyrocket Your Real Estate Business and Help You Build Incredible Wealth. It's absolutely free. If you never want to miss out on a deal and get funding for your real estate deals, it's got nothing to do with your credit. 
You always bring home a big check when you buy. You can download this for free at www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide. That's jayconner.com forward slash money guide. Download it. It will get you on the fast track to getting private money. So, Matthew, this uh, area of expertise that you're in, Quantum RE, which, by the way, is spelled Q-U-A-N-T-M, no U, T-M-R-E dot com. That's www.Q-U-A-N-T-M-R-E.com, QuantumRE.com. I want to hear all about it. First of all, first question, you talk about house rich, cash poor. What in the world does that mean? Well, I think a lot of us have seen the value of our properties appreciate significantly over the last two years, you know, far faster than anyone, uh, any of us could have predicted. Um, yet, at the same time, the economy has tightened. So even though I may be sitting on potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars of equity in my home, um, I can't access that equity without going deeper into debt. So what we mean by saying someone's house rich and cash poor is I've got all of this wealth trapped in my home equity, but the irony is I'm finding it difficult month on month to meet my expenses. So I could be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars on paper, but I don't see the benefit of that. I can't tap into that wealth because either I don't want to borrow more money or maybe I can't borrow more money. Maybe I don't qualify for a loan or a HELOC. Maybe I'm just put off by the fact that if I refinance my existing mortgage, it's going to be at a much higher rate. Um, maybe I don't have the credit score. Maybe I don't have the debt-to-income ratio. So there are many, many reasons why I do not qualify for a loan, or maybe I just don't want to borrow money. So that equity, that wealth, remains trapped in my home. And, and so that's why we talk about people being house rich, but cash poor. So how in the world can someone, a homeowner, get access, convert equity into cash without getting a HELOC, without getting a loan, without getting a reverse mortgage? How in the world do they do it? We work with homeowners as investors. We are not lenders. We are investors. So that means that we participate with you as a homeowner in the potential appreciation in your home. So the way our programs work, and these programs have been around for a number of years, and they're gaining increasing traction uh, amongst homeowners and institutions who are funding them. We invest a lump sum with you, the homeowner, in exchange for a share of the future value of your home when you sell it or if you decide to refinance our agreement. Because we are investors, we're not lenders, so it's not a loan. There's no interest to pay. There are no monthly payments. And the agreements can run for between 10 and 30 years. But what happens is at the end of that term, let's say at the end of 10 years, we agree that you will settle or pay off our agreement. That's when it becomes due, at which point you agree to give us a share of the value of your home at that time. And you can buy us out at any time. And typically what happens is people sell their homes during that period. Most people stay in their homes for an average of seven years. So during that 10-year period, uh, many people will, will sell their home. And at the point that you sell your home, you would pay us a pre-agreed share of the value of your home at that point. So effectively, what we're doing is we are giving you cash today in exchange for a share of the future value of your home. And that's an investment. And because of that, it doesn't appear on your credit report as debt. We can be much more flexible with you when it comes to underwriting these types of investments. We can accept much lower FICO scores and we can be, um, we don't need to look at uh, income in many cases. So we have a 
very different approach when it comes to underwriting these types of agreements. So if I were interested in you being my investor and investing in my property to where I could get cash now, how would I find out how much cash you could give me? We have a calculator on our website that's quite easy to use. So you would type in your address. Um, and then what we do is we look up the value of your property, which is just an estimate at this stage. And we then estimate what the, your current mortgage is. And that's all based on publicly available information. And you can correct it if we're, you know, a little bit um, off the mark. And that allows us to calculate on the spot how much we think potentially we could unlock for you. And that's uh, the beginning. That So that will tell you whether or not your property qualifies. And we can give you a good indication without credit checks or without having to fill in any forms. Um, and you get that information instantly. And then if you want to go forward, and find out more about how it could work for you, then you can add your email address and your phone number, and one of us will contact you. So to find out how much you can get uh, as a homeowner from quantumre.com, they've got the calculator. You can just go to www.quantumre.com, Q-U-A-N-T-M-R-E.com, Fill in the calculator and they can give you an estimate right on the spot as to how much money you can get. Uh, in many cases, regardless of your credit score, uh, in many cases, regardless of your verification of income um, and et cetera, you can find out right away. Um, so, Matthew, let's say um, I'm a homeowner, uh, which I am, and I'm interested in this. How is this a win win scenario for the long term? How I mean, what risk do I have in agreeing to this type of agreement as the homeowner when really none of us know what the value of my house is going to be 10 years from now or when I sell it and what percentage I would have to give up in equity share? Well, the risk really is um, it's not so much a risk as such because the risk really is something that's unknown. The thing that none of us know is what the value of your property is going to be at the time that you agree to, um, that the, the contract comes to an end, which could be, let's say, in 10 years' time. So, so that's the part that none of us know. So that's where the, the risk and reward element comes in. What you're giving up as a homeowner is a share of the future value of your home. Now, you know what that share is from the beginning. That share doesn't change. So there's no risk that the contract terms will change based on a change in value of your property. So there's nothing that's going to come out of left field that you're not expecting. And the only thing, as I said, that you're giving up is some of the future equity, some of the future value. Now, if the value of your house goes down, we are going to get less because the percentage remains the same. If your home goes up in value, we're going to get a bit more. So we both win if the value of your house goes up because you as the homeowner get more equity, but we as the investor will, will get a, a bigger you know, uh, payment because the percentage of the value of the property uh, you know, yields a larger, larger number. Um, from an investor's perspective, what we're doing is we are betting that your home will continue to appreciate. There's a a bit of upside already built into the contract. And I'll talk about that in a moment. But from an investor, it's a fantastic way to get exposure to the equity in owner-occupied homes without any of the friction or cost associated with home ownership. So in other words, as an investor in a home equity agreement, you can buy into the equity appreciation of someone else's home, and then when they sell it, you can get the benefit of some of that appreciation. So from the homeowner's perspective, it's a, it's a great deal because you get um, tax-free cash. In other words, there's no immediate tax to pay. And in fact, the cost of our agreement can be used 
to reduce your capital gains tax rate. So from a homeowner's perspective, cash today, no monthly payments, and you can get up to half a million dollars. So you know this, it's, it's not a, an insignificant amount. From, a ho- from an investor's perspective, you can invest in the equity in single family homes where because of the way the agreement is structured, you can still make a positive return even if the house falls in value significantly. So there's no other real estate investment I can think of where you still get to make money even if the, you know, the value of the property uh, you know, goes down. So Matthew, is QuantumRE.com, is your company a, um, a matchmaker of putting investors and homeowners that have equity together and you're like in the middle making this happen? Uh, yeah, the answer is yes and no. Um, it's yes in the sense that we have investors um, and we originate contracts with homeowners, but the investors are already there lined up. So if a homeowner comes to us, we know that we've got the money in place to be able to do that transaction. So they don't have to wait to find out if we can find enough investors. After that deal has been finalized and the homeowner has got their money and that real estate asset has been created, we have a platform that enables us to tokenize using blockchain technology. In other words, we chop that asset up into lots of little pieces and we make that real estate asset available to smaller investors. And what that means is as a smaller investor, you don't need to be a pension fund or an institution. You can invest in these home equity agreements and you can get the benefit of that uh, return from that homeowner's equity and the minimum investment can be just a few hundred dollars. What type of returns are your investors seeing? Well, we target um, around 15%, just under 15% at year three. And it really depends. And that's based on the home appreciating by 3% a year. Now, if the home appreciates more, um, then then you'll get a, a greater return. So Obviously, 15% is more than 3%. So the way these contracts are written, you get a magnified return compared to the underlying house price appreciation. Now, if I bought a house, it's an, you know, it, it goes up by, say, 5%. The value of my investment goes up by 5%. But through a home equity agreement, you get built-in leverage structural leverage, and there's no debt, remember, but the contract gives you enhanced returns compared to the appreciation. And what that means from an investor's perspective is the house may only go up 2 or 3% a year, but the contract itself has a, a, an inbuilt return, and that gives the investors a better return than if they were simply to own the property themselves. So how long have these home equity agreements been around and why have most people not heard about them? They've been around for over a decade and most people haven't heard really because it's the beginning of um, this type of asset class. You will hear about them very soon because the amount of momentum that is growing in this asset class is tremendous because they serve a very useful function for homeowners who want to access their home equity without taking on more debt. So this is not another mortgage product. It's not another HELOC or another reverse mortgage. It's something completely different. And potentially, it could untap a $23 trillion market because that's that's the amount of equity that's in residential homes in the US. Now, the only way that you can access that equity right now is through debt. This is a completely different instrument. It does not increase a homeowner's leverage or or a homeowner's debt. It doesn't increase their borrowings. So from a homeowner's perspective and from an investor's perspective, it's a much better investment in some respects because you're not putting additional pressure on the homeowner. You're enabling them to monetize some of their existing assets. And there are an enormous number of institutions that want to get their hands on the ability to participate in uh, the equity upside in residential homes. 
So, you know, you may not have heard about it now, but, you know, it's a, a market or it's an asset class that is growing at a phenomenal rate. And soon we think it will become a mainstream product um, that will be offered alongside other mainstream homeowner products as an, uh, as an alternative. And that's, that can only be good for the homeowner. So these home equity agreements have been around for more than 10 years. Uh, most people haven't heard about it because it's still relatively a new asset class out there. Um, but we're going to start hearing about them more and more and more as time goes on. What are, to summarize, what are the major differences between a traditional mortgage and these home equity agreements? The most important difference is that it's not a debt obligation. It's not a loan. A mortgage is a loan that is secured against your asset, which is your home. We're investors. So the way that we get paid is entirely different than the way that a lender will get paid. A lender charges you interest and they want to make sure they're going to get their money back. So that's why they secure their loan against your property. What we do is we take the same risk that you as the homeowner take because we invest alongside you as an equity investor. Now, that means that we get paid in a completely different way. We get paid by taking a share of the value of your home when you sell it. And that means your home could go up or could go down. If the house goes down, we could take less. So we have a completely different risk profile than a lender does because the lender gets their pound of flesh irrespective of whether your house goes up or down you still owe them that money so there's a like, number of differences i um, like i like the illustration of the, pound the of shakespearean flesh. reference ahead. yes <laughs> so let me ask you this question i own a house i'm interested in your home equity agreement I want to get cash today. I'm willing to give a share of the value, the future value of my house, say when I sell it down the road. Question, will you give me more money now if I'm willing to give up more percentage share of my future equity? Will you give me less money now if I'm willing to give up less equity share in the future or how is that calculated and are there optional different levels of amount of money I can get from my or because of my property? Yes. So there is a range um, of investments that we will make. And it really is very flexible. It's entirely dependent on how much your property is worth and how much equity you have. But there are minimums and maximums. So the most that we will invest typically is 25% of the current value of your property. And if we add that to your existing mortgage or uh, mortgages, if you have a HELOC, for example, um, then that combined lean to value amount must be no more than 75% of the value of your property. So what that means is at the end of our transaction, we've invested in some of the potential future value of your property, but you've still got 25% equity. So what we don't do is we, we make sure that we leave you with a, 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 you know, a fair chunk of equity. And it's good for our investors as well, because that means that we're not overexposed to your home should the value of your property um, fall significantly. But to answer your other question, the minimum amount that we invest is 30,000. Maximum is half a million. And as long as those figures fall within those two boundaries, if you have a $2 million home, for example, the most we'll invest is half a million because that's 25% of 2 million. And if you have a, a, a $500,000 home, then the most we'll invest is 125,000 which is 25% of that. So you can have any amount from 30,000 to 125,000 in that case. And the amount that we invest dictates the amount that you agree to share with us when you sell. So if you want us to invest 10% 
of the current value of your property, we will do that in exchange typically for 16.5% of the future value. So if it's 5%, then that's going to be about eight and a quarter. So the, the proportion is, uh, is direct. It's just fascinating, Matthew. Fascinating. So Matthew, who would benefit by reaching out to you and how should they? We have um, really two, two types of um, people. Really, First of all, homeowners who are looking to access some of the equity in their home without taking on more debt. And you can see how much you could get by going on our calculator and you can then arrange a call if you want to find out more at that stage. We also want to um, hear from investors who would like to buy into these home equity agreements. We have a website, the same website, there's a different part of it where you can click on the investment side, register as an investor, and then you can participate in some of these fractionalized home equity agreements. So you don't have to buy the whole thing, you can buy a fraction of it, and you can build a portfolio over time of these home equity agreements, which gives you exposure to the equity in single family owner occupied homes that are not for sale. That's fantastic, Matthew. Well, Matthew, we're about out of time. So I'm going to leave it to you with any final comments, parting comments, uh, final words and advice before we call this episode a wrap. Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me on. Um, you know, it, it's, it's been fun that I can't believe how quickly the time has flown. Um, but no, other th- you know, we're very excited about this. I mean, we've been working on this for four years. Um, and just to see the marketplace as a whole, um, with the companies that we work with, the amount of interest that's coming from banks and institutions to fund this. And I think there's going to be an enormous amount of activity in this space, and it will become a truly new financial instrument. Um, so to be there at the very beginning of this is is very exciting. And I think we've got a long, I, you know, to, to quote an expression, we're on page 20 of a 500 page novel. So I think we're, you know, we're just at the very beginning. So, you know, we're, we're very excited to be part of this and to, to see where it leads. Fantastic. Matthew, thank you so much for taking the time to join me. And um, I just can't wait to go to your website myself and see how much money I can get. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Look forward to it. There you have it, my friend. Thank you so much for joining me here on another episode. And I tell you, I need your help. I really appreciate the five-star reviews uh, on iTunes. If you happen to be watching on uh, YouTube, be sure and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes with amazing guests, just like I've had today with Matthew Sullivan. Uh, Be sure to like and share and subscribe. Uh, That means a lot to me. So here to you. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. Here's to taking your business to the next level. And I'll see you right here on the next episode. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconnor.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide. And download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnor.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.